Welcome back to the show. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for sticking with us with the guest. We have a we have a fantastic guest today. I know I know everyone will know this 90s heartthrob as he's known as on the internet. This is this is Jeremy London, the actor, not the porn star. This is definitely Jeremy <laughs> London, the actor. Jeremy, thank you for joining us here on the Tony Michaels podcast. It is fantastic I'm, to have you. I'm I'm just desperate for attention, really. <laughs> That's the only reason it, it, I'm here. Is that is that porn uh, star even... Jeremy London? Is it like <laughs> someone? We were talking before before we brought Jeremy on here. We were asking him, and he I says just there's another found Jeremy out London about out there. this guy. Yeah, I just found yeah. out about that guy. I guess some some dude that does gay porn. I promise, Grandma, it's not me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know. <laughs> film is film, I guess, and maybe he's trying to take your uh, your handle there, Jeremy. So, you know, you have you you were in Mallrats. You were in I on was. Seventh Heaven, uh, a Party of Five. You were famous for all those, and I and I want to address a few things from those. But the one thing I want to start off with is there's not only a Jeremy London, there's a Jason London, and I'm not a there twin, is. but you are. And the one thing I wondered is. How, how do you guys get confused with, you know, do people confuse you? Do, how does that work when in the twin world? Yeah, I, they I most really... certainly do. Uh, they do. They do. I mean, I guess m- mostly at conventions, I guess, really, whenever I do conventions and, and people bring right. days and confused posters in for me to sign and stuff like that. And, <laughs> you know, it just. And you're like, uh, yes, I, I will take the money. I'll sign. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right. <laughs> it's, I, it got to, I, I would tell people that it's not this isn't me this is my brother and most of the time people are just they don't believe me they, they really? think that i'm fucking with them for some reason and uh can i say that so they think there's only one oh, you, you you can say you. anything the fuck you want yeah, on yeah. here man okay, so they, they, they think there's only i think there's only one jay london out there right like that it's it's not jeremy it's jason it's just one one london yeah they just i don't think people read credits I guess. Well, I was gonna say, is that I, how your I, career started? It started because I basically I dragged him, I dragged him into the industry. No, <laughs> but we are getting ready to do it. To do, we've only done one feature film together. Uh, it's called right. uh, Branded, which is a killer killer movie on on. I think you can find it on Amazon. But we actually just booked a movie. I just about ten minutes ago, I booked a movie with Mickey Rourke. And uh, oh, whoa, and congrats! Yeah, yeah so, nice score. Yeah, yeah, nice that should be interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that should be interesting. So I literally just got off that phone call. A few minutes ago, so awesome. pretty exciting. Awesome. Well, we're breaking news yeah. here. We're breaking news here on the yes. Michaels it's podcast. called the hunt. Called the Hunt Club. Yes, the Hunt Club. Yes. What's it? What's it about? What's it the about? Club. I don't have a read. Haven't read it yet. Honestly. Oh, yeah, fantastic! Yeah, so like, getting like, the, we don't I just know. got the offer, and just they're sending me the script. But uh, you know, if if it's got Mickey's pretty picky, so um, my brother's right, done right. a movie it's with gotta him be before, good. and so and uh, my friend David Lipper's directing it, and so yeah, they're both. They're all really, you know, they're quality uh, folks and so i expect it to be um a good project that i'm excited about mm. it. that's awesome and we can shoot here doing... in mississippi where i'm yeah oh, oh so you're shooting it What's there up? you're shooting it there yeah which is great it's about two hours away from my house which is fantastic yeah oh, that's great that's awesome. great that's even great. better so, so tell us so tell us about that because because uh you're at your career you know you started out as like i said the teen heartthrob you know you you were in you were in um mall rats Days and con- or no, your brothers and day. Geez, see, I'm I'm even getting you. <laughs> seventh Heaven, and then and then Party of Five. But your career, uh, Party of Five, was way before do, Seventh Heaven. Now, now you guys, you 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 do a lot of acting, directing, writing. Tell us about that. I do, I do. I mean, you know, I I'm almost fifty years old. I've been doing this for thirty two years. I've been in this. I mean, mm-hmm. my brother and I, I dragged him into audition for a movie called the man in the moon which was reese witherspoon's first movie when she was 13 years right. old and uh, it's a beautiful movie the guy that directed kill a mockingbird directed it so our first mm-hmm. uh, intro into the business was at a pretty high level and uh, and then i was lucky enough to land the uh, lead on a television series with sam waterston called i'll fly away uh, in the early 90s uh, and uh, sam had been in the man in the moon uh, played reese's father and uh, uh went to bat for for me and uh, I was able to get the audition and uh, got the role on I'll Fly Away, which we went on to win the Emmy for Best Drama. Um, so Sweet. it was a really, really good show, really, really good show. And uh, so I, I I got my feet wet early uh, on in the, in the industry as soon as I started sort of pursuing it and started at a relatively, relatively high level, which was really um, a blessing uh, and a curse, (laughs) I think. (laughs) But um, you know, it's, uh, 
it's just one of those things that here, you know, 32 years later, I'm, 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 I'm surprised, I guess, that I'm still that all of that, any of that stuff's still relative, but I mean, we did mall rap more than 25 years ago now. Right. Well, yeah, you know, I, I was doing now than it ever was. Right. When I was doing some, uh, re- cause I was trying to remember back on mall rats. I'm like, and I forgot, I was like, Stan Lee is in that fucking movie. I'm like, he's in there. And I was trying to remember the scene because there's the famous part where Jason Lee's character is on like the, the bridge, right? Uh, the second level bridge. Yeah. And they're talking about, you know, I don't know, the crotch of the comic book yeah. character. Yeah. Right, right, right. And, <laughs> yeah. and, and you know, basically uh, Stan's character, it's, it, it's him. It's a cameo. He's trying to get across, yeah. the, you know, the love life thing. And then I'm like, I know, I know in the movie jeremy's character talks to him and it, and and it, it didn't fail at the very end there's the dismount of the stan lee cameo where he comes behind and then your character you know you guys like yeah the did you get him he's like yeah he's yeah right here he's like <laughs> yeah. Yeah. he's like hey he's obsessed yeah. with with superhero crotches or what, whatever with, the yeah whatever yeah, yeah, the yeah. Was. that was fun man i'll tell you i i very much uh was uh t.s uh quint uh, i i didn't know who Stan Lee was when they first started talking about Stan. I once they said he created Spider Man, I was like, oh, okay, I know. Then I know that, but I, I was never really a comic book guy, you know, or anything like that. And so for me, uh, it was there's very the whole thing was very genuine. And uh, m- but meeting him once I met him, he was so wonderful. And uh, you know, it's he spoke so highly of, of being a you know he always claimed that that was his favorite uh, cameo he ever made in a project and then in his last cameo he's holding a, a mall rat script right in, uh, right, in the, right the marvel marvel movie he did so um you know it was one of those things that was is now looking back was monumental you know right. in scope, but at the time so oh. so was it like then in 1995 of course you know he hadn't done the spider-man movies and <laughs> he hadn't elevated he hadn't elevated to this stratosphere of, right. of like folklorem i guess you'd say right but what was well, it they when, always just gave him Stan like Lee little was, yeah, i think he finally you know he had he had lines he got to act he got to do things you know one of the things that was kind of frustrating i think not only to him but even to myself whenever i would see him in uh, the future cameos is that they literally were just cameos they were right oh that's Stan in the background there that's him holding the br- whatever mm-hmm. they never you they never took advantage of the opportunity to let him be something other than uh just uh you know even even uh, after the Easter performance egg. that he gave even after the yeah. performance that he gave in mall rats because when i wa- went back and watched the clip he's fantastic in it like his timing's great nailed it. his timing's great how, how, how many days was he uh, on set with you guys i think just the one day just I the one day. it, it might have been two but i'm pretty sure it was just the one day but also also you guys are you yourself are part of the marvel universe now i guess so now yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's, re- he's reading the Being script so it's all it's all by canon proxy, now. yeah yeah, yeah, by proxy. yeah. So, uh, breaking news: Jeremy London is part of the Marvel universe, and he's a Marvel superhero now. <laughs> through the, well, the Mall so. Rats, it has to be some sort of you know uh, timeline, you know, separate. Uh, what 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 do we call it now? Now that they did the Spider Man, the, the, uh, oh, the, the multiverse, the multiverse, yeah. multiverse. Yeah, so, yeah. right? In 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 another universe, I'm a huge Marvel star. <laughs> <laughs> so the other the other projects that I wanted to touch on because I found them I found them uh, very very curious in your list of projects. Uh, one of them, uh, well, two of them actually. You've done a couple of reality TV shows, and I I feel like that we live in reality TV you know culture now. Like we're in this weird timeline where I I always say we're at the intersection of WrestleMania and real life. Like you know we've somehow we've we've made our politics and. And important shit like part of the show and um but you you were actually in a and i think it's the reality tv show president so i wanted to talk to you about the a couple of reality shows that you were on one specifically that i found a nugget it was like a a wife swapping celebrity wife thing swap with my, yeah where you yeah, yeah. you got to meet uh seagull which is uh the wife of jackie the, seagull is one of the my time best friends share. Yeah. is yeah. she really so there, you guys still there, talk she's and one of my be- dearest oh yeah she's one of my that's de- fantastic became one of my dearest friends they're they're so, wonderful people you know the show is slightly misleading they're not remotely right. as shallow as uh as as they uh uh 
portrayed them to be. But Jackie also owns that personality, and she knows that that's what people kind of want her to be. And so she plays the hell out of it like Lucille Ball. I mean, she, she's not that vacuous of a person uh, or shallow. Uh, as a matter of fact, she's one of the most generous humans I've ever met in my entire life, and she's a, a remarkable mother. Um, and, uh, you know, David is a hard, hardworking man. Um, and, uh, but just a lovely human. Um, uh, but you know, all of their kids, we, we became very, very close to all of their kids. Um, and, uh, have spent a lot of time uh in, in that big mansion down in florida we've spent it is huge it is huge by the there. way it's 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 and they're building the they're still building since i've known them uh they're still building the biggest house in america uh it's right oh wow it's mind-blowing I, I guess my question about the house since you've been to the house have you been in the the stripper sex dildo room that they have there because on yeah. the show they really they yeah. really show this room like that's the other that's the other it's, jeremy it's London. you go into oh, her oh, closet oh, oh. no no yeah yeah that's the other jeremy no you go in it's amazing uh, you go into her closet and in the back of her closet is a private door is a door behind all of this it's a secret and then you go into this room and it's like you know zebra striped carpeting on the on the and it's got right. a stripper pole and on all the stuff but we would just go in there and play video games we didn't i mean all the rest of it was kind of just like you know oh that's that's I mean, hilarious that's like no that that's the one thing they kind of feature on the show because it's you know it's the most salacious thing in the house probably uh, but you are just, right she totally that's, that's under jackie in a nutshell she right, does. She right. knew. She knows that it's going to be um, salacious and fun, and uh, it, that's who she is too. I mean, you know. Uh, but she's oh, before everything else, she's a, just a, a smart woman, and she, she's a very, very uh, good mama. She's a that's wonderful cool. mother. That's cool. They they didn't really portray her that way on the show, like you said. But uh, she didn't portray herself from someone that who way. knows her. Well, yeah, you know, yeah, right, right. It, 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 yeah. Now, now during the show, because another thing I want to ask. Um, is about you living in Mississippi because I believe at the time during the show this was this this show has been um, aired for several years but uh, yeah, you lived my on your farm seven there. Down. yeah in Oklahoma right yeah. he was a baby right yeah, yeah oh you were in Oklahoma now. at the time we were. we were in Oklahoma at the time oh so yes. now you're Mississippi but you're still living on a yeah. farm because in the, in the show um uh you you actually go shovel some cow shit and because yeah, I, I, I grew, I grew listen, up on a farm in Missouri I grew up on a cattle ranch in Oklahoma. And uh, uh -huh. but I don't live in I don't I don't live, live on a, a ranch now in Mississippi. I just live in a, a we we have a gardening business, a big garden in my backyard. But okay, I don't have we don't have animals uh, yet. That's our goal, though, my lady and I. That's <laughs> oh, our okay. goal. But um, I got you. But, but, but you are uh, playing yeah. in the dirt, though. It sounds like All well, you got to play I'm, in the dirt. On I mean, the we farm. have a, a business called London's Most Wanted. Uh, you can find our uh, our website uh, or our, our site on Etsy. It's called London's Most Wanted. Uh, um, I uh, created a uh, pepper jelly business and uh, I make pepper jelly and uh, baked goods. I became uh, basically a grand, a grandmother, <laughs> even though I <laughs> that, am a new grandpa. That's awesome. And I, I'm, a that's new, awesome. A, I'm, I'm a step grand, I'm a step grandpa. Can you guys believe that? Ooh, I can't believe grandpa it. Jeremy um, London uh, with his, with his yeah. jellies and jams. This is fantastic. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to make a really good granny one day. I suppose. We just need to get into well, some, some knitting in yeah, the, <laughs> yeah, it's far, far from the, the crazy party life in Cal from California back in my, uh, back in the day. I mean, I'm well, a you know, man. so, so you're making jams and jellies. You're, you're, you're <laughs> yep. knitting, you're knitting, uh, <laughs> you're knitting there. Not knitting. In not knitting yet. Not, not knitting yet. Okay. Well, well, That's we'll, 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 yet. Leave, we'll leave that for, for future <laughs> projects on the, on the, Bucket list. Store. but you're all you're also you're right. You're also booking movie deals. Um, this is this is very interesting that the Jeremy London and not the porn star, obviously, but uh, <laughs> um, uh, that the progression of your career. Now, Jeremy, we like to play trivia here on the Tony Michaels podcast. So I have prepared because it's my turn to be the the host of the trivia. So I have Let's prepared um, the trivia, and I I think you're gonna like the theme of today's trivia. I kind of. I kind of sacked it for you. Um, <laughs> it's it's nineties movie trivia. So okay, um, yeah, this will be interesting. It, yes. So <laughs> let, let's uh, let's let's start. <laughs> We're gonna have five questions, possibly a bonus question if we have, need a tiebreaker. Uh, each question is worth one point. I will state the question with the multiple choice answers. You will ring in with your buzzer or your thumbs up and 
if you get it wrong, the other person will have a chance for the point. The person with the most points wins, and they win nothing. But we like to play trivia here on the Donut Michaels podcast. Are Hello. you ready? Ready. All right. Question ready. number one. Who did Steven Spielberg originally want for the role of Dr. Alan Grant in Jurassic Park? Is it A, Kevin Costner? Is it B, Harrison Ford? Or is it C, Tom Hanks? I'm going to say Tom Hanks. You are you are incorrect. Gabe, the, the, the question throws to you. I'm going to say uh, B, Harrison Ford. That is correct. That uh, is correct. It makes sense. I mean, it makes sense. Right, yeah. Well, yeah, I, I mean, I mean. Indiana you're right. Jones, I figure, you know, right? I know. Well, I, I mean, just figured that think... because he did Indiana Jones, that he wouldn't want to oh, yeah. do that again. With but, but also, you know, it's it's sort of they have that established relationship, so it makes sense. When I first saw the question, um, before I knew the answer, my guess was was Kevin Costner, but Harrison Ford or Tom Hanks makes sense in that role. But I, I thought actually Kevin would, would that would have been my guess, but I was I was wrong on, yeah. on it as well. So. So, all right, question number two, which of these facts is true about the nightmare before Christmas? Is it A, Tim Burton didn't direct it? Is it B, Disney delayed the release because of Hocus Pocus? Or is it C, Danny Elfman does the speaking voice for Jack? I know this answer. He did not direct this movie. Tim, Tim Burton, Burton you are correct. Tim, Bur- Tim Burton did what? not direct he the movie. He didn't direct this movie. No, and and, he and, did not. and 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 Danny El- and Danny Elfman just sang the songs. He didn't actually do the voice. Right, or, right. So the, uh, here's a, a fact of this: the movie is based on a story and characters that Tim created, but the film is directed by Henry Slick. Slick is that how you say it? Um, Tim did produce the film, though. That's why his name is on it because he wrote. Oh. Uh, is it based on the characters, and he yes. did produce. And he it. was so working he had a for Dis- Tim, Tim. Tim was working for Disney whenever he created it, and Disney really didn't get it. They didn't understand it, and so he actually right, right, because it it, it is even to this day. Now, my my daughter loves that movie because she loves Halloween. My son and Christmas. absolutely loves it. Right, and it's a great yeah. mix of Halloween and Christmas, and and it's it brilliant it. that they it's brilliant that they have that movie because it pairs the two. Because now, like when you go in to buy a Halloween costume, the Christmas trees are already fucking up in the in oh the, yeah, you know, it's great. In the store. Yeah. So it's, great. it's a I actually perfect just mix. got. I actually just got, well, sorry, Santa Claus just got my son, my son, <laughs> uh, 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 a framed lithograph uh, with all the, all the characters. Uh, oh, uh, from, very cool. Put on his wall. From yeah, the, yeah. Fr- oh, from the Nightmare Before Christmas. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah, my, my daughter's highly into that movie. Uh, we watched we watch that movie over and over again. Of course, she loves the yeah. Disney Plus act. And right now, the, uh, uh, the, the musical... Um, Encanto, is that how you say it? Uh, it I haven't uh, seen that yet. A, I haven't seen that. Oh my gosh! If you let your good? son watch it, you will watch it a million times because yeah, the music yeah. in it is just fucking phenomenal, that's and you great. can't get it out of your head. Great. You can't that's get great. it out of your head. So, all that's right. Question great. number three: We are we are in a we are in a tie so far. Which of these facts is true about the movie Scream? Is it A? It was originally called Scary Movie. Is it B, they originally wanted Heather Locklear to play Gail Weathers? Or is it D, Denise Richards was forced to drop out of the role of Casey Becker after Drew Barrymore wanted the role instead of her role of Sydney? It's called Scary Movie because I read the script and actually auditioned for it. Oh! Boom! Wow. Boom. Look at that. Inside scoop. What role, bet, which, I, uh, which, which role did you audition for? I don't even remember. I think it was uh, Skeet's role, I think. Wasn't Skeet? Did Skeet was Skeet in that? Skeet was in it, right? Well, you know, there, there. How many were there? There was like I don't remember. Four, I don't. Yeah. And then, and then so long. God, it's been so long. Uh, yeah, yeah. Skeet Ulrich was in the first one, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He played the boyfriend. Yeah, yeah. It was his. It was. It was the role that he got. Yeah, yeah. I got you. Uh, I got you. All right. So in the in the multiverse, yeah, but, but I, you I do are remember. The it, I remember. <laughs> it's a scary movie. I do. I do. Wow. So that's what the script. Well, is it the parody? Because I was thinking about this. The and parody, I go look at it. The parody is called Scary Movie now, right? Yeah. Like they parody. That's probably where they, they have, got they have the like, scary. That's probably yeah. where they got that from. Yeah, yeah. It was yeah they're like, called we'll just call what it is. It's a scary movie. Yeah. yeah. But aren't they doing oh, yeah. a new scream? Aren't yeah, they yeah. doing a new? Yeah. So they, they did it already. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It came out this weekend. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, perfect. So they did, well, perfect they did, timing. They did four. Okay. And then, uh, and I don't quote me on this part, but I, I believe the rights to the property expired or something along those lines. 
were repurchased. And then this is a reimagining of, cause they were like, well, we can't just call it scream five. Right. So they're talking about right. this being the redevelopment of like taking the existing characters coming in to basically push the new generation off into the other spin. And then, right. and then, and then basically capitalize. Well, no, on I have the real yeah. Right. Well, I clearly, I have a relationship with Nev Campbell clearly from party of five and right from with, uh, with David Arquette, who's one of my oldest friends and from Hollywood. And, uh, uh, so I'm just thrilled to see them getting back at it, you know, mm -hmm. staying, staying, yeah. staying busy. Yeah. My, my wife yeah. was really excited when she seen that all, uh, cause I, we watched the preview and, and we seen that all the original characters are going to work their way back in because you know, that that's like yeah. 1990s, you know, uh, yeah. teenage. We're like, Oh my God. Well, hopefully Jamie Kennedy is my boy. Hope, hopefully Jamie makes his way back in there too. Cause I love Jamie. I've done a couple yeah. of films. It would be great, great if there was like some unreleased VHS tape that has now found its way onto YouTube. And he's like, this is how you just avoid getting killed. Like, back <laughs> that way. All right. So everything's so possible. Is, um, feel like I feel like I'm sort of this like insider trading. I kind of have a well, little bit of an advantage. I, I, I did. I, I tried to stack the deck. Um, you know, you know, uh, uh, last week on the podcast, Gabe, Gabe, Gabe was uh, uh, on. We we have we have a little part of the show we call Bonehead of the Week, so I kind of thought maybe I you know give him a dig here you know really <laughs> stack the deck this year because he kind of he kind of had some technical difficulties. And it wasn't still, my fault. It was the camera, the well, mic. It was we're all. Still, we're still blaming him here on the podcast, <laughs> so we're still maybe sending the. Aim at your crotch. I'm telling you. Well, it happens when you're right. when you're a producer no. of the show. Uh, question number four: Which actor was originally cast as Julie Juliet? Opposite Leonardo DiCaprio in Romeo plus Juliet. Was it Alicia Silverstone? Was it Kate Winslet? Or was it Natalie Portman? Alicia Silverstone. That is incorrect. Uh, Jeremy, we'll Natalie that's your... Portman. Natalie. Correct. Correct. Oh. Jeremy takes that question as well. Um, uh, here's, here's a little fact. Down, Natalie... dude. <laughs> <laughs> so Natalie was forced to drop out of the movie after uh, executives at Fox saw the rehearsals and thought she looked way too young to be playing Leonardo's DiCaprio's love interest in the movie. So it wasn't, it wasn't, girl she could have only been his girlfriend now. Right, right, right exactly. Yeah. Right, right. Because <laughs> yeah, in the movie, in the, yeah, in, in the movie, what are they, 14, 15, something like that? Oh, uh, yeah, they have to, well, I they mean, they 15, have to be teenagers. In, the, in this, yeah. the story, I believe they were 15 and, uh, Right. Six, right, which is also they're, crazy to be like, oh, you got. I mean, I guess they're you know rival gang families, but you're just like having shootouts with 15 year olds, which again, I guess is not so crazy knowing gangs. Yeah, I don't think Shakespeare would have um, approved, but hey, yeah, you never well, know. well, you know, I I like the movie. You know, I kind of I kind of stack these questions it was for my well own done. interest mm -hmm. because because I, I I'm actually a fanboy. Phenomenal in it. Yeah, yeah, and Harold Perrineau is brilliant in it. Uh, there, in there's there's the a lot American there's movie. a lot of good performance yeah. and, and performances oh in yeah. that movie. It's it's incredible. Yes. It is a great movie. Yes. Just like it's looking not an at easy it, one to um, pull off. oh hell no. Mm -hmm. Well, and even at the time, like you wouldn't think that a piece like that would be very popular. Um, but the way they did it really resonated, and it and it worked really well in that space. Oh, right? so, oh yeah, like was Oh yeah, oh yeah. Well, John Lee is so like great in everything. What is he yeah. not great in? Like, yeah, he's I mean, he's a bit of a chameleon for sure. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, he's so, brilliant. Well, we well maybe maybe you'll have to uh, help us get some more uh, really good guests on the show, Jeremy. I'll, I'll uh, keep you in my Rolodex, and I can keep tabbing. And maybe maybe you could put put some good words in for us, and we can play more trivia with these folks. Um, which of these facts? Uh, the next question, number five. Which of these facts is true about the Lion King? I wanted to get some animated films in this mix here. Um, I did the uh, Nightmare for Christmas, which is time stop, but we got it animated. Is it A, Can You Feel the Love Tonight was almost cut from the film, the song, Can You Feel the Love Tonight? B, the Will the Bee stampede scene took Disney CGI animators 13 months to complete? Or is it C, the movie was a uh, prestige film and because of, because of it was animated by Disney's animators A Team? Is it A, B or C. I'm gonna say the wildebeest scene, and that is seriously just a guess. It is it is that is not correct, Gabe. Mm. It's your point. Even though you're not gonna win and you yeah. can't win. Well, but... you know, it's I got I a did. fighting chance. Well, <laughs> you have 50-50 chance okay. here of not getting yeah, smoked, Gabe. <laughs> a is what again? 
A A is the song. Can you feel the love tonight? A. It is A. It is A. Boom. That is okay. correct. I do have a fun fact. I just learned the other day. Speaking of music, though, I did. This is a complete guess that I made on A. Is um, uh, 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 is uh, the composer um, uh, Hans Zimmer, right? So I just learned the other day the reason that he composed the film. He almost passed on it entirely but at the time he had a small uh, a son and uh and basically realized the connection between the movie of losing you know Simba losing his father and then also uh not having a connection with his father i believe it was and then having this uh, opportunity to make a film that he could then you know take his son to the premiere and all this stuff and having an established relationship um, which was like, wait, I was like, oh, one, I totally forgot that Hans Zimmer even scored the film. And then two was just the motivation behind it, which I was like, yeah, learn well, something new every day. Being a parent will change you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, absolutely. Will, it certainly will. It, it changes yes. your outlook on everything, you know, uh, not just, uh, not it just made, uh, made me grow uh, up. Yeah. I mean, uh, it's the best thing that ever happened to me. And now, awesome. You know, awesome. Now I have a, and, and how you know, old your son? You said your son's how old? Well, I have four sons, including my stepson's four. 2018, gotcha. yeah, 2018, 14, and seven. Uh, my uh, biological sons are, are, are uh, Wyatt and Lyric, and they're seven and 14, respectively. And then my stepson, Ethan, uh, who's 18, and uh, my stepson, Noah, who's 20, who uh, just had a child. And so now I'm a step-grandpa. Um, That's fantastic. And uh, so, so, yeah, I mean, so from 20 to seven. And, and you know, the whole grandpa thing is going to teach you a whole new thing. You know, I hear that changes, uh, not just being a parent, uh, but then on to being the grandparent change. Because, you know, you can send I'm them home and love. that sort of shit. You yeah. know, they say that. Yeah. Well, you know, we, you we, can, my, you them, my lady and I. hats and gloves. Yes. <laughs> when I get into knitting, I can need some <laughs> for it. Yeah, you're um, like, I got you a gift. What'd you get me? Oh, I got you. A, I made you a sweater. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, my lady and I, we, we, we really have been... Um, We've had him for the last three and a half weeks here because uh, his dad's out of town working and his mom has been sick. Um, and uh, so uh, we all went through COVID together. He gave the oh, baby wow. gave us COVID, which was crazy. Um, oh. uh, but but yeah, so we we spent a lot of time with him. He actually is just in the in the other room. Uh, oh, cool. So cool. if you hear any babies crying, that's what it is. Well, that's great. Well, thanks for that's playing trivia. Is. You 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 kick Gabe's ass. I I knew, I knew you would yeah. with the '90s the '90s movie trivia. So uh, I would have been uh, ashamed thanks, otherwise. Thanks for playing the game. <laughs> All right, but uh, the, ever, uh, the audience that. always likes the trivia. So um, love it's, it. Uh, love you know, it. it. It's fun. It's a quick break because uh, I, you you mentioned COVID and having COVID. Um, a, a couple of my family yeah. members who are vaccinated had COVID. Um, I live in a red state. It's kind of running rampant in some of the red states and and otherwise too, um, which leads me to why we wanted to have you on the show because I know um, it, you you are famous for being in these shows and movies. And the things that you've done, but you also do not have any fear about speaking with pol about politics, I and that's one not. reason why I wanted mm. to bring you on. Yes. Right. So, so you are a blue dot in a red state, right? Is that fair to say? Very much so. Yes. I'm so, tell us about your experience, so, yeah. because uh, 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 because you've lived in several red states, and I guess being a blue dot in those red states, uh, tell us about that experience that you've had. Especially you the know, change that has come over the last four I, five years. I have to bite my tongue a lot. I have to, you know, I have to, I and I and I don't like biting my tongue. Um, but you know, uh, let's just, you know, I, let's just say the the ladies' uh, office work party was awkward, um, and I wound up leaving. <laughs> um, uh, I I just overall. Uh, I, I know that it could be worse than, than what I have to deal with here in Mississippi because I, when I just went to Oklahoma where my family lives and they're everywhere. I'm seeing F Biden flags and stuff like that. Right. And it just makes me sick to my stomach because there's no reason to even have that type of, uh, of uh, negative attitude towards Joe Biden because – a, he hasn't had time to screw up that much, but B, uh, he's actually trying to do things that actually help the country and help bring the country together. And this idiot Trump uh, did nothing but divide uh, divide our nation uh, in a way that I've never in my almost 50 years have ever witnessed. And I never, I, I never understood. 
the Civil War before until now. Uh, and uh, it uh, makes me it makes me actually angry that people are uh, dying because of misinformation. I'm not one of those people that 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 finds joy in these right wing, you know, radio hosts and stuff like that that are dying from COVID um, uh, for their misinformation. I, I actually find it to be sad, um, and right. and it's and it it doesn't have to. Be be this way i've never understood the idea of calling yourself a patriot but then not doing what it would uh, take to actually support uh, your fellow man your fellow american and every all of us just be in this together i mean we're sort of fighting a common enemy which is this um virus and and all of this stuff and i don't understand the politiz politicization of it i don't understand people knocking uh, anthony fauci who's just trying to help people right. I, I it's all basically has taken this mask off of the ugliest uh face of our nation and it's embarrassing we it's are sad a yeah we're a laughing stock to the rest of the world we've never been a laughing stock to the rest of the world we've always been the the top of the mountain you know and now we are absolutely a laughing stock um i have a second home and family in australia and they're they, the stuff that they say about us there is it's absolutely embarrassing uh, our uh leadership has become all about politics and politicians beating other politicians and it has nothing to do with, with helping out the constituents it has nothing to do with helping people uh even with a mansion and cinema uh doing the shit that they're doing to to throw the a wrench into these these bills that are actually good positive things for our nation just to do it uh, right i don't i don't understand it and it, it's infuriating uh it's absolutely infuriating i've never cared as much about politics um in my life as as i do now because i saw it coming as soon as i realized that there was an a chance that Donald Trump could actually be our president. I was one of the people that actually in the beginning was like, oh, well, he'll never, it's funny that he's right. running, but he'll never be the president. We're not that shallow. <laughs> our nation isn't that broken. Boy, didn't we learn. <laughs> <laughs> Good God. And then, and then, you know, all it did was it, it literally, you know, people say that Donald Trump created all. No, it didn't. It was clearly right. obviously here. All he yeah. did was make it OK to be able to right. show that side of your personality. Well, he, he let the he let the boogeyman out of the closet is what he did. Exactly. The boogeyman was there. The boogeyman was just waiting to pounce. Yeah. And right. unfortunately, uh, just the the hatefulness and the the the, the privileged bullshit, the, the this all of this denying uh, our horrible past and 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 trying to uh, this revisionist history aspect of of trying to say uh, you know things that didn't happen that happened that uh you know are marks dark marks on our nation um to say that we can't teach them to our children it, it just it's we're doomed to repeat every bit of it well you know, you know it's that's, already that's happening a, that's a really good point about truth and teaching people history because um you come from oklahoma and, um, you know, you are you've had family in Oklahoma for a long time, it sounds like. And I, I, I grew live up in, Missouri, in Oklahoma which, and Texas. Right. Which I'm not far away from Oklahoma being in right. Missouri. Yeah. And I, it was just a few years ago that I learned about the Tulsa massacre. Did not know about it. And I was Me talking too. to a friend. I grew up in phone. Oklahoma. Right. And I, and I was talking to a friend of mine who's a teacher and, he, and he's a white guy just like me and you. Right. And and he's like, why didn't we know about this? I'm like, because we're white because we're white yep. black black folks know about the Tulsa massacre they know about it because it's important to them it's important to their struggle and we don't know because we weren't taught because it 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 hurt the it hurt it hurt the the privilege or 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 whatever we want to call it in this country and why we can't just get to the truth and and know these things is kind of ridiculous yeah. and, and i i think it's why so many people are frustrated because I believe the one thing that Donald Trump also uncovered, other than the boogeyman, is that uh, minority ideology in this country, because 
we have a majority ideology, and I believe that most people, whether they're considered themselves Democrats or Democratic Socialists or moderates or independent, whatever, uh, you know, anti-Trumpers, whatever they want to call themselves, I believe a lot of people, 60, 65, maybe 70 percent of the country are kind of on the same page. You know, they'll argue over the little here's and there's, but they're pretty much on the same page. But we, we uncovered that there is a minority ideology and their goal is to keep control and, and not let people have democracy. Right. To make. Well, sure that's the only way they're going to keep control. Well, and, and, and it's, yeah, and they it's know, clear. They know it. Right. Well, we're recording this on Martin Luther King Day. We're going to air it in a few days. Yes. But we're recording it on a day where a man who who marched for the right of people to vote. And I think people get it confused. He was marching Peacefully. for people to vote. Yeah. Right. Not not just black yeah. people, but all people to vote. He was he was he was wanting all. And I I I being pro democracy, I want the Trump the Trump supporters to vote, the crazies to be able to vote. I don't think that that is going to necessarily make us worse. It'll make us better. It makes us better when we know the true outcome of an election. And if our democracy is representative of that vote, I think we're better off for it. Well, I just want to know what these people actually think Trump did for our country that was positive because he never did anything he, he, he the, the the strangest thing to me is the people that say he's the best president that we ever had when he literally accomplished nothing the man's worried about crowd sizes and uh, uh, uh bad mouthing people and acting like a child he is embarrassing. The whole grab your pussy thing was nothing compared to actual like the the disgusting human that he actually is. And so the people that uh, put him on a pedestal, it says way more about them than it does him. He kind of is just who he is. They are horrible right. people for right. A, uh, a, a, a not seeing him for who he is, but also uh, allowing it, because if. Joe Biden was to do even one of the things or Obama was to do even <laughs> one of these egregious things that Donald Trump has done, they would be crucified for it. And so uh, the most bizarre thing to me is is taking something like our nation's uh, health and the fact that almost 900,000 people have died and either denying that it's real or now trying to blame Joe Biden because more people right. have died on his watch, even though uh it's because these idiots won't get vaccinated and and mm -hmm. they're they just spreading misinformation they're drinking piss and eating horse worm <laughs> i mean there are reasons why most of the people dying now are republicans uh, it's it's really kind of they're sort of eating their self, eating their own it's I'm, well I literally literally I'm like, yeah let them let <laughs> well, them do that let them do that you know but well you, you know uh we 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 did a Gabe did a video on on the 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 piss eating thing, and he actually took it a step further because you know we believe because we do a lot of comedy here on the show, and we believe that that the parody and satire is dead. Like like you you were you were and still are in the movie business and did comedies uh, as well as you know drama, but you did a lot of comedy, and yep. it, it's so frustrating that in in the world the timeline that we're in right now, which is a crazy fucked up timeline that we have to go to like level 30 to make fun of these people because Gabe did a video, a, a funny video the other day about how um, uh, these people aren't going to go just drink piss. They're going to start eating their own shit, which is like the next step, but all in the it's, same breath it is. today, today that's trending on Twitter that some pastor in Texas spits loogies into his hands and spreads the loogie I on someone's saw face. That. Like what in the hell? What? How? How do you people even <laughs> get to this level? Like Gabe let has a video it. about how they're going to eat. I, I, I mean, yeah. this, what, it is, let, it is, just it seriously, is, let yeah. them, uh, 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 let them take themselves out because it, at this point, the only, only way that we're really the only true herd immunity we're going to get to is the stupidity herd. And so we have to get to a place where the <laughs> yeah. smart people outweigh the stupid people. And unfortunately, right now, it feels like the stupid people outweigh the smart people, but yeah. they're killing themselves off. So just let them. I mean, yeah, just like well, they really the they're, they're on Twitter. It's like, let, let, let them drink piss. Let them just right. let them do it. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. Seriously. Like the, the herd, oh. the herd uh, immunity, it really is like it's the herd of flock of sheep is what it is, right. they'll is like, and oh, they'll be the you know, first yeah. ones to call us sheep which is the fun <laughs> yeah, yeah. oh it's always it's projections the, yeah it's always it's always projection the the projected aspect of this entire 
uh, uh, ordeal has been, it's so obvious uh, to anybody with a, a, a brain in their head. Uh, and so it, it's, the, the reason that when you, you can't actually have a debate with these people, the first thing that right. they will do is just resort to calling you names because they're right, children. Right. They have the brains of <laughs> sheep, like, like two year old sheep. Um, but I almost feel like, you know, uh, the other day I, I'm, you know, I, I said something like, like, why, why are people so, you know, surprised that this guy's living with a pig heart because tr brain, uh, Trump's been living with a pig brain for eight, almost eight decades and people got offended for pigs. And people like, don't <laughs> you say that about pigs? They're some of the smartest animals on the planet. Uh, <laughs> and I was like, oh, it's really, it's really bad when we're in that situation, right? Yeah. Oh my God. There's a, it's, it's yeah, it is, it is, I mean, it is an insanely bizarre, fucked up, a shit show of a timeline that we're in where it's like, okay, it, because it does go with that where some people are like, oh, maybe uh, we are living in a simulation. Like maybe this is the matrix. This is like so <laughs> insane where each it's, time we're you're glitching. Like, we're right, glitching. No, we're, there's like we're a glitch, you know, <laughs> and all like, you have to do is somebody did to something. Any one, yeah, any one of Trump's speeches and all it's the same thing over and over. Like who is going to these Trump rallies thinking that they're going to get something new out of it? All you have I to mean, do they is might get, just... They might get a new variant of COVID, but... Uh, oh, they, yeah, that's <laughs> literally the only thing. But but then they're going to say that they've, uh, you know, it wasn't COVID, it was uh, anthrax or some dumb shit, you know, instead right, of right. actually, like, owning it. And, I mean, just yesterday, this other idiot woman uh, who uh, was going into public and, and yelling at people who were wearing masks and telling them that they were stupid and telling them they were stupid, she died yesterday from COVID. Right. Uh, right. It, right. It, I mean, Tony and I talked about this earlier going today. To get it. Yeah, Tony and I talked about this earlier today, which is like the people who are so triggered and so upset at people wearing masks, right? They they themselves go out of their way to mm -hmm. find these people who were not in any way, shape, or form in any sort of proximity relation to them, but they go out to somewhere else and then bitch and moan and complain about someone else doing their own thing, wearing their mask. Don't even know who this well, person is. Well, it's the is. same people that, that are against gay marriage. It's like, if you're against gay marriage, don't marry a gay person. <laughs> right, right, simple. right. It has right. nothing to do with you. Yeah. And they so, are not in your yeah, home. They the are not part of your family. Of, like, what right, exactly. Right. It doesn't. And But they make it about themselves. They're like, oh, this is, this is inflicting pain on me. It's like, you didn't even know this person existed. So yeah. what are you doing? And they're saying that right? it mars the, the 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 sanctity of marriage. Like, give me a freaking break. Who do you know that's still married that hasn't been through at least one divorce? Not very many people. It happens, right. but it's not that often. Marriage isn't that sanctified anymore. I mean, Jesus. Right. You know, I mean, well, I'm, my advice, I've been my advice it is times. to not to not do it. <laughs> right. <laughs> like I I don't know why gay people want to get married because it, you know it, it exactly it, really is, it almost it, ends it almost always ends in divorce. Why do you? want to do it right but just stay together to, and love each other you don't have to be married. should have the right to do it it's a piece of paper man it's a piece of paper right, it right. literally has should not uh it should not uh delegate anything other than you know I, people want to own property together and they and i and i get all right. of that you know and so i understand all of that uh, i don't understand the people that make it their issue that it right happens. right right it, so, it, it feels very closeted to me <laughs> right there you go that, per, that goes really, back to that projection that goes back right, to that projection. Is. hey so so I want to ask you one. Is. I want to ask you one more thing because I know you probably get a lot of pushback um, because I get it in my comment threads, and I live in Missouri. I've never actually been to Los Angeles. I've been to California, but I've never actually been to Los Angeles. Um, Gabe lives in Los Angeles, and I know he gets it a lot. We get this. Oh, you're George Soros funded Hollywood elite. I'm like, what the fuck are you? Are, are you listening to what I'm saying yeah. and how I also? Talk? Yeah, I <laughs> fucking wish somebody would pay me. Like, Please, George you're, you're Soros. Like, Please. Like, are you <laughs> like? It's are, like, oh yes. yeah, I get some stimulus checks, but also if I was getting funded by George Soros during the pandemic, before or after, right? Yeah, yeah, dude, I'd say whatever what it you is, want me what to it say. Is, is I'm these, sponsor these people. These people. Uh, they only uh, uh, speak on behalf of their um, their Führer, which is Donald right, Trump. Right. And so they think that because they are puppets that are only manipulated by puppet strings, that we must be, that we couldn't be independent-minded right. people right, independent right, thinking right. and actually actually give a damn about society. We must, there must be something other going on. The, the biggest, the most annoying thing for me, and it's so hard for me to 
keep my mouth shut, uh, is that I, my mother-in-law, uh, runs a gun club, which is a, you know, they shoot skeet and all of that stuff. And so I will go out there just to get out of the house. I'll go out there and work with my stepson and go out mm -hmm. and just help her out in any way that she needs to, 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 you know, whatever she needs to help with. And so, um, there have been a couple of times whenever, uh, I've been talking to some of the the redneck members out there, uh, all wealthy white men, of course, uh, mm -hmm. and they find out that I'm from Cal that I live in California, and their first thing is, oh, oh, that communist state, right? Yep, it's this. It, it, nobody knows words. what communism means <laughs> right. anymore. Socialism, communism, nobody even knows. Nobody what... knows. But people who they, people who criticize not even Marjorie anyone, Taylor Green and all these idiots, <laughs> right? Right, and anyone, they're elected officials, right? Yeah. Anyone who they don't even know anyone, anyone who's criticizing uh, California, right? That, I heard one the other day that was uh, uh, Cala China, California, California China. I think China Yeah, China Pony. That's what it might have been. China, 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 China Is that what they called it? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I was in I was in uh, Wal literally Walmart the other day, and you know how um, just say I was over in the cheese aisle, uh, there, there are, you know, there are name brands and then there are like the great value brands, which are, right. the, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. Walmart brand, whatever. This guy told his wife, don't you get that great value? That's made in China. And it's horrid. Like, <laughs> I like, was like, first of all, you're an idiot. All it is, it's the same company. That stuff is all made by name brand companies. They just allot a certain portion of what they make to be right. called great value. Because right. then, uh, then Walmart can put take a little bit of price off. And, and it helps the the people that that need help with with. Uh, pricing and stuff like that a little bit more but it's the same companies making the same product and they're still making a profit off of it they're just making a slightly right. less profit by allowing walmart or wherever to call it something yeah. else but this guy literally was vehement about not allowing uh his wife to pick out a uh, great value cheese because that's made by china oh my god well you know you know you should have pointed out to him that he's lucky that there's even stuff on the shelves because empty shelves Biden and uh, you know it's it's just more with our shelves are packed. And we don't have right. that issue here and we're in a the deep people red state. the people taking uh, that are making complaints I what I've noticed take photos on a Sunday right so Sunday like end of the week they clear house and people also yep. do last minute runs so yep. you're not you're gonna be low on inventory but come Monday that shit or Sunday night. Uh, that shit is back on the shelves and refilled. Yeah. And the same well, the same people that complain about that are also the ones who uh, are sharing photos of shelves from another country. From Japan. And then saying, I just saw that. I just yeah. saw that. Right. From years ago. From a couple of years yeah. ago. Exactly. Uh, it's it's my, you know, it, it it's all propaganda. Right. And the, the proof in why this happens is the fact that uh, even Rand Paul says that he gives Fauci shit because he makes money when he does. And right. that's the only reason they, they, they've got uh, Rand Paul giving uh, a lecture to college students a couple of years yeah. back and yep. saying that give lie to them, give yeah, yeah. the misinformation, right. Uh, right. Do, you know, get ahead by being a liar. Uh, instead of in the, yeah because in that speech he was talking it wouldn't you know a few years back he was like misinformation works and the whole yep. the whole context for for those who are listening is Rand paul gave a speech to a bunch of college students and basically said how he it wasn't that he cheated when he was in medical school but he would uh, spread misinformation with other people of his of his class uh and tell them oh about uh, what to focus on right it's week. specifically yeah. going to be focused on the liver or the kidney so they would right. not focus exactly. on anything else on the whole body, and they would only focus on this one organ. And then right. when they come out of the test, obviously the you know the test is going to be now great on a curve because a bunch of people ended up failing because they only prepared for one organ as opposed yep. to the whole anatomy. And he's like, at the end, he goes, "So what I'm saying is misinformation. It works." <laughs> oh Which I'm God. like, "You 100%. fucking oh my God!" Well, we, we were talking about this the other day, it, Gabe, and he's still doing it. Right. right. Well, we were talking about this the other day, me and Gabe. Uh, we're talking about this, Jeremy, on one of the shows. I don't know if there's a podcast or what, but we were talking about how if if Donald Trump wouldn't have failed at the COVID response and he would have just listened to Anthony, Dr. Anthony Fauci, no one would know who the fuck he was. No one knew who Anthony Fauci was before Donald Trump was like, yeah, you get out there and you tell him. So he had a scapegoat. 
Because before that, presidents actually listened to the experts. They listened to them. And then what would happen is like with Obama, with Ebola, with swine flu, and then on and on the other presidents at Anthony Fauci, all of them, um, they have listened to his advice. They take the credit. Like the president takes the credit for what the work that Anthony Fauci does. Trump couldn't see through that through his ego that he he knew his response was bad. He knew it was going to fail because he was lying, right? So this mm-hmm. misinformation, he knew it was going to be a lie. He knew it was going to be a disaster. Disaster. I really truly believe that. And he didn't give a fuck because he doesn't care about the people out All the country. he cared about was the fact that it was that if COVID was going to become what he was told it was going to become, people would stop going to his hotels and they would stop spending money in his restaurants and that it would hit him in the pocketbook. And that's all he cared about. He cared about his own industry uh, and uh, making money uh, whenever in his heart of hearts. He knew that he was doing it because he had a hundred million dollar loan coming due. And oh shit, if people don't go to my hotels, I'm not going to be able to pay that loan. And so, yeah, maybe some people will die. Remember when he said 15 people? Got yeah, it. It'll, it'll just go, go away. away. It'll just, it'll just go away. Go by Easter. 900, by Easter. Not, yeah. yeah. It's 900,000 people. Well, it's, it, it's, it's, it's so, so much like uh, Ron DeSantis. I don't know if you guys saw this, but the other day there was. Oh, uh, an interview or, or when he was, was huffing and out, puffing work. his way through it. <laughs> well, well, yeah, it was after that, but he basically, yeah. he, uh, he expressed regret on, uh, on Trump shutting down the country like he did. So I guess Ron DeSantis was part of this like early response team with the president. And the one thing that he regrets that Trump did was shut down the country, uh, when he did. Jesus and Christ. the man is, I mean, for someone who's like, he continues to just, fail and fail and fail again and shit and just like make a complete shit show of the state. But to now after clearly getting COVID and struggling and having people die and like just fumbling the ball each time, he then has the audacity to go, you know what? I still regret Trump closing the country down early. And it's like, if he would not have, and you know, if he would have actually followed through, we wouldn't be in the situation we are hopefully less but if he had not shut it down, I can only imagine what the fuck would have happened. Yeah, well, it's, he just let what a million tests expire. Uh, COVID yeah. Tests oh yeah. Because well, that's, they yeah. They, yeah. they they would have jacked his numbers up, and so well, it's the yeah. whole. Well, if you don't test, then you won't have cases. Ideology exactly. that just makes non- absolutely no sense. Because when it comes down to it, in the long run, numbers don't mean anything. None of the numbers are correct anyway. The numbers right. are probably way. Way, way more than what numbers are and they're just numbers and so ultimately it's about people like how about keeping people safe he made the comment the other day about like nobody ever goes uh, to the doctor to preemptively um, uh, uh, keep from getting sick you only go get tested after you're feeling symptoms it's like what the fuck do you think a, a mammogram is or, or, or yeah. a colonoscopy or, or just like a any, normal uh, annual check anything just checkups yeah. in general that's what a checkup is and so right. ever anybody in their right mind or anybody you know with that that goes to the doctor uh, that's why they're going um, um if they're not sick they're going to to make sure they don't get sick and so that right. statement on its face was so stupid and then coming from somebody who literally clearly just had one a really really bad case of covid <laughs> yeah, um, right and right. his wife is standing behind him and she has breast cancer that's crazy right yeah it's crazy it's a, I, I don't i don't know if it's a willing uh, a willingness or a, a, a disregard for the human life he treats right. them like they're absolutely the stupidest humans on the planet and i can't argue with him they wow. kind of it, are. Yeah. It 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 begs it begs the question, right? Like, you know, are they doing this on purpose? Are they doing it because they've been fed this misinformation? And speaking of that, because I know I know you know some people who are big spreaders of misinformation because you've done uh, a, a film, and I don't know how well you know him, but Kevin Sorbo is one of the biggest. Good God, I'm uh, so misinformation. Man. And and I know I'm, I know you've done a film with him, so I don't I don't know if you know him uh, personally or anything like I that. I but... met him briefly on the day that. We shot that's about it right but i'll tell right. you i had i used to have respect for the guy and now it's just there's z- zero none none yeah i have no respect for anybody that calls themselves a christian right and then doesn't care about their fellow man to to, to think for one second just in evangelicals in general 
that Jesus Christ would approve of all of the hatefulness and the misinformation and the misguided um, uh, anger and literally almost calling for the heads of people that are trying to help uh, actually help people. Uh, mm -hmm. It, it makes me feel like, well, a, I don't, you know, as I've gotten older, I realize that religion is kind of a joke anyway. I do believe in God because I feel like they're a God energy, but it's a different kind of like, right. Ethic ethereal thing it's not a you know the bible to me is just a bunch of stories or whatever but the fact that the most hateful people um on the planet in general including you know the pope and all those idiots because of i mean uh, more people have died because of religion than anything else uh just even what just happened with this hostage situation in texas you know yeah, it was crazy. muslims and jews it's all based on this the people this who you don't believe in my invisible guy well i'm not going to believe in your invisible guy well i'm going to kill you right. because my invisible guy wants me to kill people because yeah. of, and, and i'm going to go to heaven because of it uh, the whole thing comes down to the fact that these are the people that call us free-minded people sheep right and mm -hmm. that's probably the most frustrating thing about the whole thing they're so uh i don't know empowered by there's something so weak in them that they need to feel better than uh, other humans. And the only way that they can feel better than other humans is to debase that other human and to, to make that other human feel less than them in their brains. And uh, it, it makes it's, it's empowers them for some reason to feel that they're for some reason smarter than or more holy than, or closer to God, or whatever it is, it fulfills this empty hole in their hole in their hearts and their psyches, and it ultimately comes from a place of utter weakness. And that's the most bizarre thing about the whole about all of it is that it truly stems from self consciousness and a lack of pride. You know, it's like it's it's mm -hmm. it's all put on a pedestal of oh i'm so prideful i'm gonna fight for it but that's not what it is you're you have no pride and so you have to make yourself feel empowered by debasing other uh, other people and making them feel less than because that's the only way you're going to elevate yourself because you know you're not adequate enough on your own merits and it just it the, the psychology behind it to me is maddening um and uh it it makes me worry about the world that my children are growing up in mm -hmm. because yeah. uh you know it, it's what what information is going to make it to the to to their minds and to their brains and and what reality are they going to wind up living in when we keep fucking it up for them yeah the, the people that are supposed right. to be the adult the adults right now <laughs> right. are acting like I would say they're acting like children, but children these days are better behaved than the adults. So they're acting like the yeah. worst children, I guess I should say. Right. They're acting like right. the bully, the, 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 the playground bullies. And ultimately, when you go back to the psychology of what creates a playground bully is that they're usually being bullied at home. They're usually being mm -hmm. there's usually something else going on in their house that is awful and they don't have an outlet for it. They have no way to take it out on any, but they can't take it out on their parents. They're probably being abused by their parents or whatever. They can't take it out on them. So they go to the school and they take it out on the other children. And it's hurt people, hurt people. Yeah. And yeah. these people continue to want to hurt people. And it's frustrating. It, 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 it makes me emotional because it's, there's a, a deep inherent sadness to what is going on in our country right now. And it all stems from a place of feeling uh, inadequate. And so we have to posture as if, if we are this great nation of uh, built on strength, whenever they're all just scared children. Hate right. is fear based, hate is fear based, period. The only reason to hate black people is because you're scared of them. The only, right. you, know, you know, the only reason to 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 hate gay people is because you're afraid you're gay. Maybe you are, you know, that it's all none of it is built on actual um, like, like, say, 
even if it was, you know, what the love of Christ, none of it has to do with any of that, but they're right. the first ones that are leading the charge on, on hatefulness and, and judgment of, of, of others that have nothing to do with their own lives. And for me, it just is a profound sadness um, that, makes me realize that we are not moving forward as a society, that we are truly going backwards, you know, and makes me wonder I, where, I, I totally, where, where all totally this is going to end. Where, where's it going to end? Yeah. yeah. I totally I mean, agree. Well, go ahead. Gabe. I was going to say, I mean, like, you know, it really does go against, you know, do not cast the first stone or it's like, well, you, you guys are the ones who are, who are going to do that. And whether it's through yeah. a, 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 you know, it's, uh, a source of confusion or or hate or uh or just like an, a misunderstanding of another fellow human being you know because you know whatever it is but just with that bully mentality like you said mm -hmm. you know they they're unable to find an outlet to understand why that's happening to them or whatever but instead then they just reflect that onto another person because mm -hmm. if i feel like shit then the only way for me to feel better based on this pattern is to make someone else feel like shit. And what ends right. up happening is we it, just continue to, <laughs> to go at each other. And exactly it is right. one of those things. It is it's, sad. And like, you know, yeah. It's the whole, what Sally says about Susie says more about Sally than it does. About mm -hmm. Susie. It's it. the people that are projecting all of this hatefulness ultimately can't stand themselves. They have to do something to try to make themselves feel better about who they are. And at mm -hmm. the crux of all of it, they are scared little wimps. They are these. Isn't that Trumpism, though? Isn't that weird. Trumpism? A hundred percent. It's Trumpism. Donald Trump is one of the most insecure humans on the face of the planet. Why do you think that he immediately uh, goes towards anybody that comes? compliments him uh, he said something nice about joe biden when joe biden gave him credit for the goddamn right vaccine right, right, he finally right. was just like well it was actually it was actually pretty nice so if yeah, if, right. if all well, of I like this joe time, i like yeah. joe yeah let's, if, let's uh, go brandon i like time, joe <laughs> uh yeah and that's another thing that let's go brandon thing what a wimpy cowardly oh way you, to say oh something that means that means nothing you think that oh Joe Biden God. gives a fuck that anybody's saying anything about a dude named Brandon? Like, <laughs> yeah, we a... actually have a president uh, in. Yeah, he, he's got a back, he's got a spine. He doesn't need right. care need to waste time on any of that shit. Right. It's the same reason that like Rachel Maddow won't um, uh, debate Madison Cawthorn because a she's not going <laughs> to give the guy at the stage, but she knows it would be such an, an annihilation oh my God. Yeah, and waste of her him. time. It, it, could you imagine? I mean, what a, a frivolous waste of time. Well, it's the same for it's somebody. The same, yeah, no, same same reason why uh, AOC won't give Marjorie Taylor Greene the right. time, right? What Marjorie the Taylor Greene wants to debate because it, here's at the end of the day, it's like whatever's going to happen, they're going to deny, deny, deny that they lost or or didn't know what they were talking about. Then they'll and also you can't change that, right? Right. And so what what ends up happening is you give this person who shouldn't be validated, who should not be in office either. It, it but you give this them. person, Yeah, you, you you give them a platform. It validates the thing that they're saying, puts it on a national stage, if not larger. And then when it doesn't go their way, they spin it and they say, it was unfair, I was cheated, or you know what? The footage is doctored. Right, some shit. The Republicans are now saying that their future um, potential presidents or whatever, the Republicans aren't going to be be allowed to debate to to participate right. in the debates yeah, yeah, can you imagine making sure they, they won't they and they know and they know ultimately that it's because they've we've got so much uh, material that can be used against them now that right. they know it will all be brought up in the course of those debates and they have no right. um leg to stand on and so they know that they're walking into a fire with no fire hose that they've created for themselves they lit the fire 
And now they've done so many stupid and egregious things that they know that any one of those things will make them look stupid in a public forum. And so they're just saying, well, we're going to avoid the public forum because we don't want to have to be called out on our bullshit. And that's mm -hmm. the well, only reason. Don't you they're, think they're, the other thing, too, is, Jeremy, don't you think the other thing, too, is that that they don't have like, I mean, what are they going to debate? What policy are they going to debate? Right. Which there one? Is they no don't policy. have they, right, any policy. Right, they, right, they have nothing. What are they going to keep saying that this this the fucking election was stolen? How right, many I know. Times no. Can they repeat the same horse shit whenever they their own um, uh, reevaluation of all of these votes just proves to be more votes for Joe Biden? That is yeah. such a great point. That, <laughs> that is doing. such a great point. It's so, just so, oh my god. They had their they had the rally in Arizona, and Steve Bannon was on his Trader TV. And he was talking, that's what I call it, tra his Trader TV. He was talking <laughs> about, um, it it's just... right, right. But he was talking about how uh, somehow this was going to be this this rally, that, somehow the rally was going to be the start of the decertification of results. I don't understand how that works, but the rally Which is going to be the start of the decertification. Our, there's not even a way to do that in our constitution. Right. Well, you know, there's nothing I, it, in our constitution that even allows for that. It harkened back to, to me what you said about losing so many times. I was like, this is like when I, I actually tweeted it, I was like, this is like the 1990 to 1990. 93 bills trying to go overturn the super bowl like you are you are 400 and some odd days past the election you are you are talking about things that do not exist and you you lost not once not twice three four five six times you've lost this election in arizona and you think him going and speaking in a field somewhere in in bumfuck nowhere in arizona is going to start the decertification process and people not only believing it but are sending steve bannon money to continue to say this garbage oh, i'm like you listen, people are fucking that, lost you're fucking steve lost. bannon's a genius he knows oh absolutely knows absolutely that's the and he knows, just like alex him. jones alex jones is one of the smartest humans on the planet or alex jones Jones is not an idiot. He does not believe anything's going to turn a frog gay. He knows his the people that are going to give him money will believe that something's going to turn right, a frog right, gay. Right, right, so right. he is playing them like a fiddle. They, these guys are evil, no doubt about it. But they're they're right. they're they're evil geniuses, and, and and it's because they know they're dealing with the biggest fucking idiots on the planet. Listen, even Donald Trump years ago said if he ever ran for president, he would run as a Republican because those people are idiots. This mm -hmm. was when he was a Democrat. This was back when, I mean, Donald Trump used to be a Democrat. They, 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 well, I, I don't think he's ever really anything. Donald Trump's whatever uh, he yeah, needs yeah. to be in the it's room, all a bit you know, you know about I mean? Donald Trump, 100%, right, exactly. right. But he, right, he, right. He, he certainly was not the 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 Christ of the, the Republican Party. Right, right, yeah, right. right. And I also right. want to point and out so, that Donald Trump said that after, you know, after election, he was like, if I lose, I'll go. And then after that, obviously oh, yeah, didn't yeah. leave. That's because he doesn't want, but he, he, also, he won't admit that he lost. I mean, it's right, that, exactly. You know. But he also he also said that uh, he was going to start his own party. And then he was like, no, <laughs> no, that'll, that'll cost too much money. I'm just going to keep yeah. fucking scamming. I, I would love to take about 15, 20 minutes to come up with names that we could come up with for <laughs> Donald Trump's new party that he was going to have. But oh, we don't have God. a lot of time. It, Jeremy, you... I appreciate you coming on the show. And with the fuck them attitude at the end, because that, that's that's the kind of attitude we like to have yeah, here on the show is the fuck them attitude. Here's here's what I'll ask. Um, why don't you shamelessly plug your jellies and jams? Um, <laughs> uh, go ahead and plug that. And anything else you'd like to shamelessly plug for us, uh, we'll, we'll try to we'll try to get it in for you. Oh my goodness, man! Uh, so I, yeah, I, my my lady uh, Leslie and I, we started a company called London's Most Wanted, and you can find us on Etsy. And awesome. we have uh, pepper jellies uh, that are uh, out out of this world. We've got, got three different types that are, we've got cowboy outlaw and our special edition outlaw. The cowboy's sweet uh, outlaw is hot, and our special edition outlaw will blow your asshole out. But it is awesome <laughs> um, it is so, oh, it's so hot and we that's a peanut butter peppers. and jelly sandwich my friend that's yeah man i'll tell you it, it what's what's great is that you know here in mississippi pepper jelly is a uh it's a staple you know and we've right. had uh er, we've we've had um uh grandmas here who've been making pepper jelly since like 1934 tell us that our pepper jelly is the best they've ever had Oh, that's um, got to be a you good know, feeling. And stuff like that. So that's a wonderful feeling to get those those ladies, you know, these yeah, diehard yeah. Mississippi uh -huh. Southern Bells uh, telling us that it's the best they've ever had um, is great. I mean, we've sold thousands of jars of this stuff. And we do. We make I make every jar of it myself. We label every jar of it ourselves 
themselves. I sign every jar, by the way. Oh, um, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, anyone started, out there yeah, listening, yeah. And, go, and, go, and check out, go check out yeah. the Etsy store. Love London's most wanted. London's most wanted. And then, and then I've got, you know, I've got a movie coming up called open awesome. that I'm the lead in. That's going to be a lot of fun. I've also just booked this movie with uh, Mickey Rourke called the hunt club. Uh, I'm also producing uh, and uh, co-directing a movie right now called uh, interfere, uh, which, and I have a, I have an acting school called London's uh, uh, London arts acting school. And uh, I have been, uh, have been honored enough to be able to put my actors, uh, my students in several movies now and uh 85 percent of the actors in this movie interfere are my students um and they're just kicking ass and doing great and so i'm not only able to um teach them how to act but i'm able to put them in movies as well and uh, it's been incredibly rewarding that's fantastic, you're man. I like that you're passionate. And to thank you guys for having me on, man. Hey, oh, hey I just I, thank you for coming on the show. Uh, it's, every, everyone, go go visit the Etsy store. Go check out Jeremy's new movies. Uh, stay with us. We'll be right back after this break. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Mm-hmm. 